Hey everyone, I've got another analysis video to show you of uh, one of my uh, recent games. I say it's recent, I mean this is like uh, over a month now. Uh, I need to get through these games as I say. Uh, I'm trying to catch up the backlog of the classical games that I've uh, I've looked at and uh, at least try and attempt to uh, analyse them. Uh, this particular one, quite an interesting game. I, I thought I played quite well in this one. Um, I didn't really make any massive errors. My opponent kind of helped me uh, do better, uh, well, helped me uh, get a really good position, so, um, so, but I still think it's quite nice, I think it's still a little bit instructive to perhaps show you um, how I went about to uh, to win this game. So, in any case, uh, I was playing as black, my opponent is white, you start e4, e5, knight to f3, and I played d5, and I've been looking at some of his games, I noticed actually that he uh, sort of struggled a little bit against the the elephant gambit, and uh, didn't play the the best lines uh, against it. But what he ended up playing was uh, kind of shot me a little bit more than what was what he was meant to play, shall we say? Um, so after e takes d5, which is uh, one of the main lines, I push e4. And in the games that I'd looked at, uh, he had played knights to d4. And after which, you know, you can capture uh, this pawn. You get an okay position as uh, as uh, black here. The main line, though, to to sort of show you this very briefly, queen to e2 is the best move here. Uh, now putting pressure on this pawn, but notice this pawn can't ever capture because it takes advantage of this pin on the king. So a line kind of goes a bit like this: knight to f6, holding on to the pawn momentarily. Knight here, bishop to e7, actually black gambits the pawn in pretty much all lines, but he's going to get a nice quick uh, attack now. Knight captures castles, and, uh, and here you can gambit the pawn, as I say, but you know, I think black gets quite an active looking position. He's already threatening ideas of uh, putting his, uh, his rook onto e8 here, which is quite a uh, tricky line to play against you need to kind of know what you're doing as white here uh, but in any case so uh, that that didn't happen in the game what actually happened was a very very odd move uh, knight to g1 <laughs> don't ask me why uh, not a great move uh, so white is underdeveloped uh, is the first problem I guess he had ideas of maybe coming to uh, to e2 here in this position uh, but it's a pretty pretty ghastly way to play here now this just allows me to get a well completely equalize number one after queen takes here. I've got a very strong center now. I just need to hold on to this pawn as best I can, and uh, I should have a very decent game here. So as point my opponent play knight to c3, and I'll take advantage, and I put my queen to e5. So I guess a key key theme is opening if you want to play the elephant gambit well is to try and hold on to this pawn as long as possible. It's a real fawn in white side. You'll notice, you know, for this knight here to ever get active, uh, it has to go to e2, followed by g3, and obviously this creates a lot of uh, congestion problems for white because if he puts his knights on to, to e2 to then carry out this plan, he then blocks in his bishop, which is on, um, which is on uh, f, f1. So it's really really quite a congested position that white is going to get here. In any case, my opponent played uh, queen to e2, so he's got two uh, attackers here. I now de re-defend. And um, yeah, I think d3 is probably the best line here. Um, now, you know, putting an extra attacker, I'll just show you a little example line that I had a look at. Um, so something along this. I could put my bishop to b4, it's quite a thematic plan within the uh, within the elephant gambit taking advantage of this pin uh, and after something like this castles let's say I give up the pawn here uh, I can then um, create some complications along here this is quite a, an imbalanced game uh, but black probably has a slight edge here so this is just one idea that you can go for uh, if not this if he takes with a pawn instead uh, you can again Gambit the uh, the pawn here with maybe something like this. You're going to get um, you know some nice nice activity for the gambited pawn here, which is quite nice. Uh, so something along this line here is quite interesting. 
uh, lots of uh, you know there's there's these nice little sacrifices that you can go for here if you wanted to so quite still quite interesting you know black creates a lot of activity lots of complications uh, in a lot of lines uh, that white needs to uh, needs to uh, be aware of in any case so going back so that wasn't played d3 was not played instead quite an odd move g3 pretty bad move uh, I think it worsens his position one thing to, to always bear in mind um, you know, for any sort of beginners watching this, whenever you make a a pawn move, you've got to think about the weaknesses that it leaves behind. With this pawn coming here, we now have a number of light square weaknesses that have been created around this pawn. Um, so, a very nice idea for me at some point is I'd love to get my bishop to g4 here, uh, taking advantage of uh, the fact that this pawn has uh, as gone this way if it was to stay on like let's say here and let's say the bishop came here at least white has got this idea of trying to do that because his pawn defends on f3 but now now he's no longer got that plan so after g3 this is going to be a little bit difficult for uh, for black here so I, I now just developed my other knight i thought decent move uh, i've got a nice plan here i'm going to jump to d4 hit the queen and also then hits his pawn on c2. So um, I think a very, very nice idea. Here my opponent played bishop, queen to b5, a really decent move and something I didn't actually consider. Um, so now I've got a little bit of a choice to make. Do I exchange queens uh, or do I do something else? And you know, I had a look at the exchanging queens line. It's really, really not very good. Um, the problem with taking here is I think this helps white's defense massively so if I capture let's say here uh, knight captures notice my pawn is now under attack I've got to make quite a, uh, a difficult concession here by putting my bishop to d6 this does allow black to start exchanging off okay my position is still good here uh, I've got the pawn duo uh, still a nice position you know and as I say this this e pawn has now got a friend but as I say it's not not uh, as good as I could have got it, if that makes sense. So another move, and I think the move that I missed, and I did consider it, but I just thought it looked a bit too loose, uh, was bishop to c5. Really nice move. And this is the problem for for white. So positionally speaking, his two central pawn, uh, central pawn here would liberate his position, but it's impossible just due to the fact that I've got this this placement of this queen here. So if he tries to ever you know push one of these pawns forward like this, I can just capture that comes with a check, and uh, White is in a lot a lot of trouble. Um, so it's funny here in this position. Um, the best move according to the engine is B4. And you wouldn't think it. it. Basically, I think White just gives up. <laughs> the engine just said, I give up. Uh, I can't think of a good move. So actually, he gives up a pawn to try and slow down Black's initiative. So this is the idea. I capture here. There's this sort of exchange. Black is just better, but at least White has tried to slow down uh, White, uh, Black's position. But going back, I had a look at some other ideas. What else could my, my opponent play if he didn't play this pawn sacrifice? So I had a look at something like uh, bishop to g2. I think this makes sense. We're re-attacking this pawn. Bear in mind, white wants to get the, rid of this pawn so he can push forward in the center and start uh, breaking the position. But very, very difficult, as I said. So here, I can now play a6. So now hitting the queen. The queen would have to maybe come back to e2 which again makes sense it now hits this pawn three times now but uh, bishop to g4 really really nice move and there's a real problem here for white How, where does he put his queen um, you know if he tries to do something like f3 here as an example uh, then this really really nice move knight to d4 uh, forking just so much stuff uh, Black's white's position is really toast here. Uh, really, really bad position. You know, he's got to save the queen. If let's say he comes here, we just start plowing on into the position. This comes with check as well. This bishop's going to fall. It's all going to be a total disaster uh, for uh, for white in this position. 
So you can already see some of the problems that White has to face in that particular variation. Why I didn't play uh, Bishop to c5, I think, again, I, I, I don't like, it seemed a little bit loose. I think he, maybe there might be some tactics uh, to maybe try and win, you know, one of these pieces. But, you know, again, um, you know, perhaps I was seeing a little bit of ghosts in that, in that sense, because um, actually perfectly fine position that I've got there. Uh, with that move but in any case instead of this I did uh, bishop to d6 which I think is absolutely fine I allow him to capture but I've still got a nice position here I've got a good place bishop I'm ready to castle I've almost completed my development and as I say white has still got to contend with what does he do against this pawn uh, it's not not a pleasant not a pleasant situation to be in okay so bishop to b5 was played so essentially making uh, g3 a really, really pointless move. Uh, afterwards, bishop to d7. My opponent captured, a very again, a very confusing decision. I was very happy to see this, as after I captured back, I'm now threatening to push with uh, e3, and which would, of course, uh, attack his rook. It's a really nice discovery attack there. Knight g2, e2. Uh, I didn't want to play this just yet. Instead, I castle along first. I thought complete my development. Uh, this 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 rook also helps control this uh, central pawn break as well. A4 was played. Again, not the not the best move I would say, but E3 now played, and here my attack uh, starts to uh, begins basically essentially. So his rook is under attack. He's got to do something about the rook. So he now moves his rook to G1. Afterwards, I capture here on f2, king capture back, and I put my knight to g4. Uh, so now starting to regenerate some very strong initiative against the white king. King come back to e1, I capture here. I'm already now threatening ideas of my knight coming to f3, which will fork again. This king came back to f2. And here I had a really uh, cute idea here. I put my rook to uh, d6. So getting ready to throw in a check and force the king back to, uh, to d1 where again I could throw another check with the knight and hit the rook. He tries to lash, op lash out with uh, d4 here uh, so uh, you know, try and give up a pawn essentially. Um, I still throw in the check anyway. King to g1 and I then took uh, this, uh, uh, this pawn so knight captured back, I took back, I thought I might as well equalize. I'm ahead in the position, so it's always a good idea to equalize. Is knight came back to e2, hitting the rook, and I put my rook onto e8, so now pinning uh, this, uh, this rook. Rook to a3, and I guess, I suppose this is the only, only, only mistake I think I made in the game uh, in, in terms of sort of closing out the game immediately. The best move here is putting this rook here, taking advantage of this pin, winning the knights. I've got an absolutely fine position. Instead, I just decided to win this pawn. It's still winning, but it's not the most most accurate way of playing. He captures back, I capture here, and you can see clearly uh, I've got a very, uh, very good position. I'm up three pawns in this position. Uh, I just need to find ways to try and exchange off pieces. So in these sort of end games, um, I guess a little strategy uh, lesson here when you're playing in an end game and you're ahead in material it's always good to try and exchange pieces don't tra trade pawns uh, trading pawns makes it uh, can make it a little bit difficult there's sometimes some drawing mechanisms that your opponent can try and find um, when you start to uh, get rid of pawns off the board but if you exchange the pieces off and you're left with a king and pawn ending this is totally winning, and you can see here. If I was to play king and pawn, if I removed all of these all these pieces, uh, this would be a totally winning position for black. You know, I've got a three to two majority on this side, and on this side, I've got a three to one majority. So it's a very very easy win for me. Okay, so uh, b3 was played. Here, my bishop. I put my bishop back. He puts his other pawn. I put my bishop there. King to d2. I throw in a check. His king comes to c3. I put my knights to e5. I was very happy to see this move as I had a very nice uh, tactic here now. I captured his uh, knights. King captures back and I throw in this lovely fork. So um, yeah, this is how I managed to win. 
much more material now. I'm totally ahead here now. Um, and, well, I I'll just speed through the rest of the game. There's not really a whole lot left to see. So here I'm just trying to uh, push my, uh, my pawn forward to create a passer. So I'm able to do that and then. And here I put my knight to uh, h3, getting ready to push this pawn now. h5 is played, I push the pawn, and here my opponent resigned. Uh, he would have to give up his bishop just to stop the, uh, the pawn. Interestingly enough, though, I mean, if he's able to exchange his pawns somehow, this would still be a very difficult position, <laughs> as the uh, the bishop and knight is a very tough checkmate to win. But as I say, totally winning position here. I'll just round up these last few pawns and then start pushing this to uh, get an easy win. In any case, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, as I say, you know, it wasn't wasn't the best play for my opponent, but it was still a nice nice position, a nice win uh, from myself in. Uh, instead of grinding out the victory there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. Take care.